STV, votre télé. News on STV coming up. Six days is the deadline for prospective senatorial candidates to get their names inscribed on lists and submitted. Members of the Cameroon electoral body have been working on the action plan ahead of March 25th senatorial polls. Sports 2018 Mount Cameroon Race of Hope, the event is tomorrow. Few hours to the international competition, athletes have been checked and infrastructures set up for the DD. Those were top stories. Good evening and thanks for joining us in this Friday's 8 p.m. newscast on Spectrum Television. Political parties have six more days to inscribe names of their prospective candidates on lists ahead of the March 25th senatorial polls. The action plan regarding senatorial elections at the level of ELECAM is under scrutiny headed by Eno Abrams Egbe. More with Larineta Paji Ebongwa. In less than a week, Precisely by the end of the 22nd of February 2018, Elections Cameroon will stop receiving files of senatorial candidates from political parties. But before then, it has been imperative for the Electoral Board to hold its first ordinary session, taking into context the evolution of political activities since the start of the year. The 7th of February saw the nomination of the first 11 members of the Constitutional Council whose role has been played in past years by the Supreme Court. On the same date, the Electoral College was convened for senatorial elections on the 25th of March. In this regard, the President of the Electoral Board, who for the first time has chaired the ordinary session of the Board since his appointment, Eno Abrams Egbe, has this February 15 revealed that 9,666 municipal councillors across 360 municipalities will elect by indirect universal suffrage seven senators per region, while three others per region will be appointed by the President of the Republic in accordance with Cameron's Constitution of July 14, 2006. Meanwhile, during the 2013 senatorial elections, which took place on the 14th of April, 10,636 municipal councillors elected the country's first senators, indicating a drop in participation of 970 municipal councillors. After the 22nd of February, the Electoral Board of ELECAM should be able to vividly tell how many political parties have submitted complete or incomplete files and the next step to follow. The Senior Divisional Office of the Mfundi Division has been inaugurated today in Yaoundé by the Minister of Territorial Administration and Decentralization, René Emmanuel Sadi. The building has been received by workers with satisfaction after cohabitating with other employees from other offices since its creation. Larineta Pajia Bongo once again. 32 offices, two conference rooms, several toilets, an office for archives, in a building of two floors and an underground basement, are major components of the just inaugurated senior divisional office of the Mfundi Division headed by Jean-Claude Ntila. Because they needed a better framework uh, and uh, better conditions of uh, working conditions, I think they have it today. And uh, what uh, I can tell them, and I told them in my speech, is to make good use of this building. First of all, to make sure that it stays like it is today. The structure has become a reality in the town of Yaoundé at the cost of 415.5 million francs CFA. The project took six years to be completed after it was abandoned during the third phase of construction by the company that won the contract. The Fundi Divisional Delegate of Public Works, who is the state engineer of the project, Jean-Claude Ndinge, says the major difficulty in the course of the execution was ensuring the accountability of the company that won the contract, which explains the long duration. I encourage the, uh, the, pre the, the prefect, the SGO, to, uh, to work more than before, to uh, try to uh, make sure that uh, uh, his collaborators and him uh, give the, the best they can uh, because they have a, a very great responsibility 
they uh, symbolize the authority of the state. The cohabitation of the governor's office and that of the senior divisional office has been existing since 1974 and it has come to an end this February 16, 2018. In the southwest region of Cameroon, some 107 Navy have graduated from Isongo Idenau West Coast Military Training Center. After five months of training, the graduates have been challenged to showcase their professional skills. A call made by General Philippe Mpai, commander in charge of military centers in Cameroon. Clarice Ekore reports. <laughs> After five months of intensive training at the Isongo Idina West Coast Division Training Center, these over 107 Navy Engine Diploma in Technical Aptitude in French, known as CAT 1 and CAT 2, comes after completing their training in navigation, combat, and swimming as required by the training center. The training, which began with over 111 laureates and having a total of 107 upon graduation, out of which 51 graduated with CAT 2 and 56 with CAT 1 had four of its trainees dismissed due to bad conduct and poor academics. The ceremony which witnessed the award of end of course diploma borne by General Philippe Mipia saw the laureate thrilling the crowd by giving them a full piece of already acquired skills. Also present was Lieutenant Colonel Esiva Sono Serafin, Director of the Training Center. Some American Navy and a host of other top military bra were equally present. Crowning the event was a military parade done in a unique fashion of the Cameroonian Navy. In the northwest region of Cameroon, over 14,076 students from the University of Boya are benefiting from the presidential largesse. Professor Jacques Famundongo, Minister of Higher Education, today presided over an inaugural distribution exercise of the PBHEV laptops to students. Love it there. Students of the University of Bamenda have benefited from the long-awaited President Paul Bia's higher education vision laptops. The inaugural distribution ceremony was presided over by the Minister of Higher Education, Professor Jacques Flam Dungo, who called on the students to be patriotic internet users working for Cameroon's development. <laughs> The presidential gift is a Windows 10 laptop with an internal storage capacity of approximately 30 gigabytes and a 2 gigabytes RAM. To the recipients, this laptop will facilitate their learning process. Our department involves a lot of uh, stage. We have to face a lot of difficult. But now I know and I believe that that problem is solved. And we are not going to To the Vice Chancellor of the University of Bamenda, 14,076 students from the University of Bamenda shall benefit from this presidential gift. She also thanks the Head of State through the Minister of Higher Education for finally making the dreams of students of the University of Bamenda come true with the presidential gesture coming at a digital age where computers are indispensable.
Pierre Indwala, over 400 students, teachers of the 38th batch of the Higher Teachers Training College and set of the University of Douala, have received their certificates this Friday, February 16th, here in Douala. Representing Higher Education Minister, the Rector of the University of Douala, Professor Francois Xavier Etoua, challenged the new graduates to embrace digital innovations and promote the spirit of living together. Six teachers were equally sent on retirement and six others promoted during today's graduation ceremony. Let's now listen to Professor Francois Xavier Toa, Rector of the University of Douala. Major, the two major recommendations is, the first one is, they should be aware of the fact that our students now can go very fast with a new tool, which is the computer. And so they, they should be every day make effort to be up to date in such a way that they know how to cope with the, the speediness of the knowledge. The second major recommendation uh, lay on, lays on the fact that they should imply in the minds of their students that every boy, every girl in this country, both of them are brother and sisters for the same country, the same nation, Cameroon. Nothing else. That's the two main recommendations I uttered towards my um, laureate of today. Officials of the Douala City Council and partners from the Bordeaux Council from France have held their third meeting to deliberate on certain proposals to transform the economic capital of Cameroon in few years from now. As Henry Wana reports, there are three key factors that cannot be sidelined if this dream must come to a reality. Given the haphazard nature at which buildings are being constructed day in day out in the city of Douala, and the urgent need to restructure the town because of its pivotal economic status, the Douala City Council in 2016 signed a convention with municipal authorities of the Bordeaux Council in France to tap from their expertise in transforming the city of Douala in a few years from now. Meeting for the third time, Friday, February 16, with traditional authorities, the Douala City Council officials, as well as other stakeholders, Focus was to deliberate on the different proposals made by the City Council and to plan on how to go about executing the plan of action. As reviewed by the different speakers during their presentations, if their aspiration of meeting the set goals must be attained, then there are three factors that must be taken into consideration. First of it all is to target the Bonamuduru neighborhood and create a link between Plateau Jaws and the wood pole with the construction of a befitting sculpture at the heart of Rome Point. Secondly, a metropolitan avenue should be established at the west and east entrance in the city of Douala. And thirdly, a perfect communication plan should equally be put up to educate the population on how to go about recycling waste products in their neighborhood. The strategy, uh, the strategy is for us to assemble every actor and resources necessary to make this dream a reality in the city of Douala, which perhaps to some pessimists cannot be possible. That is what we want to do, and we want the population to always be alert on every move we take. However, the proposals have been made, corrections noted, the population and the world are watching to see the effectiveness of the metamorphosis the city of Douala is about to undergo. In brief, scores of people are reported dead and many others have been badly wounded in a ghastly accident at the roundabout of a lever in Yaoundi last evening. Going by some eyewitnesses, a truck which seemed to have lost control claimed the lives of many. The driver of the truck is presently on the run. Meantime, mortal remains of victims have been taken to the Yaoundi General Hospital. Let's get news out of Cameroon with VOA. Referring directly to the corruption accusations that forced the President Jacob Zuma to resign Wednesday, South Africa's new President Cyril Ramaphosa vowed to tackle government corruption. Issues that have to do with corruption, issues of how we can straighten out our state-owned enterprises and how we deal with state capture uh, is 
are issues that are on our radar screen. Ramaphosa told lawmakers he hopes to unify the various political parties to better serve the people of South Africa. And I'll seek to execute that task with humility, with faithfulness, and with dignity as well. But fighting corruption in South Africa won't be an easy task, says Zibusiso Nkomo of Afrobarometer, speaking via Skype from Cape Town. He needs a few scalps, and those scalps have to be very, uh, they have to be top uh, people. But also I think it's a culture that he needs to set, and it's a very difficult task. But I think if, if he pushes through, and this is what he, 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 he focuses on the most, and maybe the economy, he, he would do, people will reward him. Nkomo says the ruling ANC party has no choice but to deal with the problem head on. Otherwise, voters will go elsewhere. If I was him, this is the election campaign. I think this is what the, the opposition parties were going to use and say, well, you have a corrupt uh, government and here you say you want to clean up. He ha actually has to clean up because the 2016 local government elections showed us that South Africans have moved beyond loyalty. Whether people supported former President Zuma or his successor, this is a new era for South Africans. I don't know if it's going to be a good thing that Zuma is leaving because Zuma has done so many things in our, in our residence. I do think that you know, it was way overdue. Um, yeah, I feel very indifferent to just the whole system, the ANC, but um, it's better that he's gone. Zuma, who took office in May of 2009, maintains his innocence in the face of the corruption accusations that led to his resignation. Maria Magyalu, VOA News. Sports athletes to take part in the 2018 Mount Cameroon Race of Hope have undergone medical checkup today against tomorrow DD of the international competition at the level of the Moliko Omi Sports Stadium. Preparations have been carried out for a successful race. Clarice Cohen. Barely 24 hours to the Mount Cameroon Race of Hope to take place in Boya, the town of legendary hospitality, all is said to give the event the grandeur it deserves. From the Moliko Omni Sports Stadium to the streets of Boya, no stone has been left unturned. Already present and brazen up, the athletes going through a routine medical checkup here at the Regional Delegation of Public Health South Wales is to ensure they are fit for tomorrow's race. Uh, I'm coming from the northwest region in uh, Indop. I'm uh, running the veteran category, so I'm really prepared for the race. It's Choga Elvis. I'm going to partake in junior race. For my train, I know I can come first. I'm from the northwest region. I'm going to be taking part in the junior category. I'm from the southwest region. I'm for a senior, senior category, so my aim is to be the first. To the national president of the Aleti Federation, Mr. Motombi Mbome, with the much underground work done so far, he says the region is ready. We have done all it takes to host an event of this magnitude. There was a program live from the foot of Mount Faku at the banks of Radio Boya this morning. Also, he highlights this year innovations. The race this year, we are going to have an electronic chronometer, which is going to facilitate the time issue for athletes who arrive at winning points. So we tried as much as possible to make sure that we should try to encourage those who put in a lot of efforts. A cash price of 10 million, 5 million, and 2.5 million for CFA will this year be awarded to athletes who occupy the first, second, and third positions, respectively. Well, the 23rd edition of the Mount Cameroon Race of Hope shall take place in Boya, as well as matches counting for the three of the MTN Elite One Championship this weekend. What then should we expect? Harry Warner tells us. In what could be described as an enticing weekend is what Cameroonians as well as foreigners have on their menu. 
with the 23rd edition of the famous Mount Cameroon Race of Hope as well as soccer to take center stage. First of it all is the annual Mount Cameroon Race of Hope with over 500 athletes drawn from the USA, France, Australia, Britain, Italy, and five other African countries, including Cameroon, will be gunning for the prestigious crown after covering the distance of 38 kilometers from the Moliko Omispo Stadium to the summit and back to Moliko. The Gavsibin Gottlob three-time winner, Simplice Ndunge, champion of the 2016 contest, Fire Elvis, current winner, Ngwaya Yvonne, seven-time female winner, and Galim Lizette, current female champion, will all be present this Saturday, February 17 in Boya to once more face the chariot of the gods. However, Apeja Zunfu, after two outings, no victory, travels to Garwa this Sunday, February 18, to wrestle with Kotospor Football Club. Start Renard, fresh from a one new defeat, suffered in the hands of a Dink's poor on day two, shall lock horns with the Abakwa Boys Young Sport Academy, who are still to pick up a victory, bet of draw games. Bambutus the Buddha, with her multitude of supporters, shall storm the Moliko Omispo Stadium, where they shall face Colomb Football Club of San Melima, while the game pitting New Stars Football Club against Edding Sport de la Leke has been carried forward to a later date due to the fact that New Stars Football Club is out of the country for continental assignment in the 2018 CAF Confederations Cup. Meanwhile, earlier on March Day 2, the following results were recorded. Feature Football Club trashed AS Fortuna 1 0, UMS Dulum prevailed over Egli Royal de la Menua 2 goals to nothing, and Unisport de Bafang held a 1 1 draw game with Dragon Football Club of Yaoundé. Harry Wana concludes today's 8 p.m. newscast on STV. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed weekend. STV, votre télé.